All right, where we left off, I was trying to combine all of the different texturing and coloring options so far into one layer, right? And I think because I have locked layers, probably in some of these folders, it was just making it difficult. So I went ahead and saved it. And now I'm simply going to select all the layers, just holding down shift, and then go to layer, merge layers, instead of merge down. And that's going to combine them all into one layer that's has you know no background, because I had the background layers turned off before I merged. Now that I've done that, I can make a duplicate of it. And now I'm going to run that filter on the duplicate. Go into the filter gallery. So the same way you could do it in Photoshop. Finding halftone pattern. And then choosing the size of the halftone pattern. And my feeling is if you're going to use a halftone pattern, make it visible. You know, so I don't want it too small, but I also don't want it too simplified, right? I want it to be visible to the naked eye, at least when it's printed, but not, uh, you know, too extreme. And then contrast is just how black and white are they? And I actually, for this, I want the different tones. So I'm going to do a contrast of about 20. I'm not going to blast it out like I did for the blood. And then we can apply that. Now, in order to, to separate it into half tones, it has to change it into grayscale, which is why we did this on a duplicate, right? But then we can change the, the layer overall blending mode. That's what they're called, blending modes, to pin light. And you'll see how it will let the, the colors from underneath leak through. But it also really darkens a lot of it. So let's take the opacity down. And we'll see the kind of texturing that gives, right? Like old printing. So that's a nice way of adding some, some hand done kind of coloring to your spot illustration. It even makes it so the ink looks like it's bleeding into the paper a little bit, as opposed to just being perfectly clean. And it's funny because digital is really good at making things perfectly clean. So it's pretty advanced digital technique to then be able to make it look hand done again in all these different ways. And then if you really want to play with it, these are just, you know, regular pixels. So you can give them a color if you want. Instead of being black and white, we can click on colorize in hue saturation and really saturate them up so that even though these do dots at a really low opacity can kind of give an overall tone to the illustration. So I can pick if I want it to be cooler or warmer in its tones. And that helps to unify everything as well. I can also, also darken it overall, lighten it overall, just through the printing choices, the printing technique. So I can see if I like that better, I do, like a little bit warmer. All right. So now we're going to save this. I'm going to export it as a PNG. I don't want to save this as my PSD. Instead, I want to close it. Because if I overwrite my last PSD, then I'll lose all those helpful layers. So I'm going to open up my most recent downloaded PSD before I merge them. I'm just going to move these. Ah, come on. to fit it on the screen here. So there it is. 
then I'm going to bring my new PNG on top, which had the dots. And these are all little subtle features, but when it comes to printing them, it really matters. So I can keep it all in one file. Looking at it at full resolution is helpful. That's kind of seeing how it's going to print. So that's what I had before. This is now what I have. See the little bleeds that are happening. And I like that, but I can always play with opacity and kind of split the difference. And I can also play with pin light so that the textures kind of come through, but our soft light, but I think both of those are a little too strong. So I just want normal. And let's take it down a little bit in opacity. Yeah, so I like this. And I get that little bleed around the blacks. All right, so now that I've got this, I want to save that as a PSD because now that has all the different kind of features to it that I wanted. And then I'm also going to save it as a PNG. This is now my, my finished spot illustration, improved upon what I was turning in before. So if I go to my yeah spot illustration one, if you want to resubmit, you know, I'm going to show you the improvements that that made. Bring in this latest PNG. So we're never really finished with these projects as we learn new techniques. If they resonate with us, they're similar to techniques we used before in compositing, but now we're doing them on our own original work. And I like the addition of the blood. You wonder where did that blood come from? It's a skull. And you just want to see improvements as you go, from your sketch to your line art to your finished coloring decisions. Right. All right, so now I like that a lot. So I can open up my poster. Important that everything's separated in layers. And now I'm going to bring in my improved spot illustration into my poster, which is a very big file. It's taking a while to load. But then when I'm finished with it, I'm going to save that as just a JPEG to put into Canvas. So I'm going to take the newest spot illustration file. Bring it in. And now I get to finish off my poster with a lot of control. Trying to zoom in a little bit so we can see that texture.
And then because I'm keeping both layers anyway, I might even keep the uh, the old spot illustration turned on behind it just for that light offset shadow. You know, I have that option, or I can just turn it off. Yeah, maybe I'll just turn it off. Now, if I want to offset the illustration more, right now it looks like it's really sinking into that paper, right? Which is what I wanted. That's going to print well. It's got a nice mix of kind of arbitrary textures and very intentional colors. Soft edges, hard edges. And hopefully you understand how all of those things were achieved through working on this project. And of course, this comes in as a smart object, but that doesn't mean I can't do things like give it a drop shadow if I want to. <laughs> and then I can play with the settings of the drop shadow just like I did for the type. Make it size bigger, but make it a little less distanced. So it's less directional. There we go. Maybe make it a little bit less dominant too. And I can always choose a different color than just black. That gives it a little bit of presence, even just at a 12% opacity. Maybe I'll change it to 18. Okay. So, now I'm thinking all I want to change is this G. I just want to make its drop shadow a little bit stronger. So I'm just going to duplicate it with all its effects. You see how that heightens it. Peter has to think about turning things on and off for me. So that's an easy way to, to help that G stand out a little bit more. And then if I really need to, I can rasterize that copy. And I can hand adjust it using dodge and burn. Come on, keep up with me. I'm asking a lot of the computer now, but this is kind of a culmination of all the skills we've learned, right? Being able to create our own and being able to composite and use the computer. To best effect. So darken it a little bit there. Then let's uh, dodge the, the highlights. So that shows up a little bit stronger. Maybe do that in some of the other parts of the image as well, on the lettering. 